Hello, this is an assessment for restoration of a sheet mare grand piano, 190 centimetres long. That's six foot three and 85 keys. Very similar in many ways to a Model A Steinway made in 1883, uh, when, and looks quite similar in many respects. The frame style, um, different aspects of it. Not quite the same, but many similarities. And, um, Looking at the pedals here, it's had quite a lot of wear. If you look at the right-hand pedal, you can see straight away um, very much so a lot of wear. And this one's standing on an A-frame, um, so obviously you'd have to change the, uh, put some new casters on if you were going to take the A-frame off. Nowadays, A-frames tend not to be used; they tend to have either three three wheels round each caster or um, or what we call an easy fit frame. Um, looking at the the keys are at immaculate ivory, which is uh, quite, considering it's 1883, is quite remarkable, really. Can't even, I think some may have been taken off. This one here is a slightly different colour, but a uh, very good join, whoever put it back on. Uh, and that's encouraging. If you look here, you can see the piano's been French polished because they've masked off this area here. You can see the clear lines there, which we masked off, and the original polish underneath, which I think probably was black. And uh, so French polish is not something you often see black pianos French polish these days. This is obviously not done recently. So the whole piano has been repolished at some stage. And just look quickly looking over the whole of it, um, uh, it's still in quite good condition, really. So uh, that's encouraging. Um, so say nowadays people pianos tend to get polyester black because it's so perfect to finish but a lot of people prefer the French polish finish which is possible to do it actually takes longer than French polish uh, French polishing wood because black shows everything uh, uh, sewed up everything so it tends to take longer I mentioned this in other videos so I just want to show some interesting aspects of this this top lid as you can see it folds up here now this this is not uncommon for Steinways as well I mentioned Steinway because it's more common than Schiedmere in the UK at least um, so the sides fold like that uh, obviously the idea of this is really to get I think I presume to the idea of this is that you can pull this side bits down and then put the uh, candlesticks on there so that if this music desk is up um, then it, the light will still shine onto it from there because the, the pass on the music stand is not very not very long so if you've got to, if you're in the trade and got a comment on that but this is not uncommon to see in fact we had one recently a Steinway model a that was similar um we've we're re actually restoring similar Schiedemeyer grand piano uh, at the moment and it also has problems you see the music desk cracking here that also has problems so whether that's something that's endemic for Schiedemeyer Grand pianos, I don't know, but anyway, quite, quite a lot of it's missing on the one that we've got. This is much more solid, actually. Now, as I've said many times before, one of the decisions to make in restoration are the tuning pins tight. They're relatively tight, but one or two are just last, starting to feel slightly loose. Um, somebody's refinished uh, worked on this piano. You can see they sprayed over the top of the agras here. And, uh, originally, they were brass polished, and they've been sprayed over. Uh, when the frame was resprayed as well um, and looking I'm not quite sure what's happening there but the bass strings they they all look as though they're finished off quite well so let's have a listen to the bass first now, that's quite a good strong bass you'd expect that from Schiedemeyer which is an excellent piano um, they're very well made pianos and 1883 is no problem really Steinways of that age too are excellent um, it's a nice throaty tone nice strong tenor tone but as we go up here it gets a bit thin and I think that's because the down bearing that's the, the, the angle on the bridge um, it's lost its down bearing basically it's, it, over the years it's pushed down so if it's going to be fully restored you'd lift up the bridge I'm not sure if that's going to be enough it's sometimes you can lower the frame as well at the back another way of doing it basically to get a greater angle on here um, if you're in the trade you might like to comment on that but if we listen to here this area this is uh, sorry it's this area here that's very dry sounding in other words the sound isn't spreading across the soundboard it's not it's not carrying properly and so you get a very dry tone
you see the dampers there um, are not straight so uh, the damping needs regulating that one there doesn't work very well and some of them are not straight at all so um, that's obviously work that can be done notice that some hydrosil units here um, that's called a hydrosil unit uh, not so popular these days the problem with them is that people although they may work and if you're in the trade you might like to comment um, maybe you supply them if they're filled up uh, in the bath then uh, you put them in the piano there's two of them in this piano one at the far side as well uh, to try and combat drying out obviously and um, the problem is they tend to get neglected over a few after a few years then you might sort of look after them fastidiously for a while but trying to remember them all the time and fill them up and i'm not really sure whether there there might be problem with with strings in close proximity tending to get too moist and, and rust and um, haven't had a huge experience of them that um certainly my experience has been that they've not been used properly they've tended to dry out so that's really a bit of an issue i think just to show that the fall uh, all fits together like the steinway as well this front rail it um, pulls up on a, on a screw uh, and so on. So it's fixed in very similarly to a Steinway. Now the touch weight on this piano is very, very light. That's 36 grams. Um, should be 47 to 52 really. Um, set them at 47 if you uh, normally round about that to 50. And they're varied as you can see. Not going down with all of these. But I've got my foot on the damper pedal by the way to test this that one's just about going down so that would be 36 um with a bit of encouragement for hitting it underneath um the other one's slight, some slightly lighter some slightly heavier the sharps that one's not quite going down and this one neither there are 36 but there were i think the middle ones were going down when i tried earlier there we are so that's less than 36 and that one too so quite varied and really really light now looking at the hammers, they've been refaced and they've worn a lot since refacing as well. So really there's no way around this and we want to increase the weight too. So putting new hammers on will automatically increase the weight. Um, and obviously if there's too much area hitting the string as we mentioned before, then the sound's rather dull. And the hinges here, some of them are going loose. I think that one there was, was loose when I tested it earlier. Yes, so that one there and that one there is loose too. So these hinges and that make it very very light and also tend to make a noise as well so if you put new hammer shanks and rollers and how many times i've said that on videos uh, then that will cure the hinge a little so you have a new hammer the roller wears as well so just as uh, many many times we've done the same this the, this doesn't isn't really regulated now that actually the spring is working on that you can see how much wear there is on the back jack that'll probably carry on but if you're trying to think about essential work then hammer shanks and rollers are the essential work there and then regulating the piano generally so that's an assessment of a Schiedemeyer grand piano made in 1883 i'm sorry i haven't got my voice mic with me so i'm having to shout a bit more apologies for that um, i hope it sounds okay on the video it's a, a well-made piano, but it has lost its down bearing and it's very harsh in places. That's partly the hammer, but it's also because the sound isn't carrying across the soundboard, not really, not really singing. So the down bearing is increasing. I'm wondering if we might need a new soundboard. When it gets to this stage, if this was a stock piano, uh, we, we wouldn't start to restore it because. Um, unfortunately, the, the name Schiedemeyer isn't as well known as Steinway, and although it may turn out almost as good a piano, uh, we, we have a question mark about whether we can get the tone back in the middle here. Whether we can manage to get the tone in the area, sorry I'm not talking loud enough. Um, so that's very, very dry, and not just to do with hammers, that's to do with um, as a down bearing, not carrying across the soundboard. mark is really the down bearing the soundboard if you're in the trade and would like to comment on that 
I think you've commented already before when I did the last, sorry, I'm not talking loud enough again. Uh, when I did the last video with, with Shidmer, I think um, you commented, some of you, that uh, it was a great maker piano and a lot of potential. So this one would be two. That one hadn't lost its crown, hadn't lost its uh, down. Uh, when I say crown, we're talking about the slight sort of hill in the middle here. And because it's lost its down bearing, that's gone down. So you need to raise that up. Not by that much, just enough for the sound to disperse across the soundboard. Um, I hope that's all understandable. Uh, but as I say, it's got a lot of potential. The touch at the moment is extremely light and suitable if you're just an occasional player, I don't mind that. By the way, the hammer blow is, uh, needs decreasing. It's about 60 millimeters, which is, uh, should be 47 or so. So that's another regulation job. Obviously, when we put new hammers on, uh, that will automatically correct some of that but we'll still need a bit more regulation and then we'll need to wait the keys afterwards. So, um, I've probably rushed a bit because I'm thinking the sound isn't very good on this, so d apologies again for that. And, um, I hope this has been a useful assessment and uh, uh, is helping the client to decide what to do. As I say, if it was a stock piano, we wouldn't start working on it for the reasons of downbearing, really, and that um, is a crucial factor. Thank you very much for listening.